Hello, this is Daniel King with my final play of the day from the Istanbul Olympiad. And I've chosen the game from the Russia-Germany match between Kramnik and Nidic, of course, on top board. Now, Kramnik has not had the, the best Olympiad. Up till this point, he's been on 50%. By his standards, could do better. But let's see what happened in the final game. He really came out with all guns blazing. Okay, d4, all standard so far, and a Nimzo Indian defense. Well, against this, Kramnik often likes to play with e3 or queen c2, quite classical variations. But today he went for knight f3. And, well, let's have a look. He, he selected quite a sharp variation that previously Kasparov has played, and also the Dutch player Luke van Veli specializes in this system too. He can reach some very exciting positions. This is what happened today c5 protecting the bishop and now bishop g5 so this is already quite um, a sharp position because normally to break this pin a bishop would come to e7 but with the bishop on b4 that of course isn't possible so black has to do something a little bit unusual to break this pin bishop g5 is very provocative that's why it's provocative to break the pin the g pawn comes up the board Black gains some time and also manages to throw the knight into the middle of the board. Now this has been seen before, um, but you know, no, there's no definitive word on who's doing better in this position, who stands better. And here, this is the first moment when a new move is played. H takes g3 is pretty standard in this position. And, well, it's also very complicated, but it's very interesting to see Kramnik's choice here. He plays f takes g3. And look at white's pawn structure. It's an utter mess. Double pawns here, double pawns here. e3 pawn looks potentially a bit weak as well. And you compare that with black's pawn structure, which is really quite regular. I mean, this is a most un like position. Normally, he likes a healthy pawn structure, but so it shows he's really going for it today. You know, he's, he's prepared to accept structural weaknesses for dynamic chances. And of course, we can see that in recapturing with the F pawn, it's opened the F file. Now, here is an interesting moment. Kramnik selects a move, a mysterious move, rook AE1. And this rem rather reminds me of an Ivanchuk game against uh, Vasily Lagrav that we saw the other day. Basically, Kramnik is not committing himself yet, but just playing his pieces into decent positions and waiting to see where Black's king is going to go. Is it going to go queenside? Is it going to stay in the middle? Or will it go kingside? If it goes kingside, then we'll close the position with g4, close off that option. And then we can perhaps turn our attention to attacking. If g4 instead, well, the knight might, could go to either h4 or d2. I think h4 is reasonable, and then, you know, perhaps we can use the f file. Black castled here. And, well, this next move is very interesting indeed. Bishop e4, slightly, perhaps slightly unexpected, but it's an excellent move. Now the threat is to take on c6 and play knight e5, therefore f6 was played. But Kramnik takes anyway, now this is a very interesting decision, basically eliminating this knight enables white to throw this pawn up the board. So let's have a look. Um, if bishop takes then this is a very very easy position for white to play. You can see that just breaking open the position there. So d takes was played, a4 anyway, pawn takes, and again Kramnik selects a dynamic continuation. He plays e takes d4, opening up the e file. c takes d4 looks more regular to me, and white still has an attack, but I think this shows the frame of mind that Kramnik was in. And already by this stage, he had a quite a significant time advantage over Nidic. And I mean, you can see there's real pressure on black's position. And here, I think, well, I might have gone with d5 here. Um, if e5, then I think white has a tremendous position. So black would have to keep things closed. But, well, it's just another way for white to play. Okay, 
A5 was played by Kramnik. He's just not holding back. He's really going for it. Queen D6 played. I think it's a good step out of the pin. Takes. And now Rook F2. Just preparing to switch across the board. So now the D-pawn is protected. And well, I think Black's next move is definitely a mistake. I think Black perhaps should wait here. Uh, with h5. Now it's very hard to play in that kind of way when you're short of time. You're, already, you're always imagining threats. Um, you always feel you have to do something. Uh, I think maybe h5 or perhaps even taking on f3 to just try and simplify a little bit. But Black's move e5 was definitely a mistake. After d5 the bishop is cut out of play and and I, I suspect that Nidic overlooked something in this variation. Rook e2 from Cam Kramnik. Okay, so the pin means that the knight can't be taken. f5. Looks okay for black, but after this move, it's clear that white is doing very well indeed. The g-pawn just undermines the f-pawn, and then white takes here and breaks through. This is what happened. Knight d2, and black's position is just too static. Let's take a look at what happened. Rook takes, and now the threat is simply rook e6, and this one drops off. This is what happened. King c7, there's also knight e4 sometimes, and black's position came, caves in. Nidic tried a queen sacrifice, but this next move was a killer. Queen b1, just activating the queen, and Kramnik doesn't worry about a few pawns being taken here. Um, he's he's winning this position actually very very easily. Queen h7 check. When you're playing with a queen, what you need are targets, and here he has a target in the king, the bishop, the rook, and to add spice to it all. There's the e pawn as well, and this is just a winning position. Watch what happens. E7. So that needs to be prevented. Uh, e8 queen needs to be prevented. Check. Good move, threatening e8 again. Now, black has lots of random checks, but the king can hide very easily indeed. Um, if the rook keeps checking, then the king on h1, for example, then the king can come up to b3, and that's the end of the story. So, black prevented e8 queen, well, at least the decisive e8 queen. Kramnik played it anyway, and this is a winning position, and in fact, here. Nidic resigned. Why did he resign? Well, first of all, mate is threatened with queen a8. You can make some random checks with the rook. Doesn't make any difference. Okay, so black has to escape from the mate. And now white wins because the rook is loose. Check. And we pick up the rook. There was no way of avoiding that. So white wins. A really powerful performance from Kramnik, uh, which helped Russia in their 3-1 victory, which brought them to um, 19 points. But, as we now know, Armenia also scored 19, and Armenia won on tiebreak. So Russia got the silver, Ukraine defeated China, and got the bronze. It's been a fantastic tournament. Hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you like my clips. Thanks very much for watching. See you later.